All right, everybody, this is Justin Williams Savoy. So I'm taking a quick minute to bring you this message. What I want to talk about uh, today is the, um, well, a, a couple of things to keep you guys up to date with what's going on with my YouTube is I'm in transition. My whole life has changed, you guys. So in part, that's what I want to talk about for today's message. My life has changed. I feel like I have completed a cycle in my life. And um, recently I was encouraged by one of my followers on my YouTube channel to look at my first video, which when I started off this YouTube channel, I started to kind of, you know, I'd been watching a lot of videos about people who had suffered narcissistic abuse and had NPD individuals or other disordered individuals, like really honestly, who the hell knows? Because BPD at its very core is narcissism. There are some differences. We can talk about all that but I'm trying not to obsess and moving on and moving forward. So really, I want to practice what I preach. You guys need to come to a point where you stop watching narcissistic abuse videos and move forward. Now, everyone's timing for that is different, but my purpose in life, I have a very distinct worldview. Um, you know, if I come out and talk about it, which I usually do, it's very complex and I feel like I want to be long-winded, but I should really save my win my breath for running up a hill, you know what I mean? Because, you know, um, in reality, each person's story is different. Uh, we all have many different views, even if we share the same worldview. For example, um, Orthodox Christianity and you attend um, one of the many, many Orthodox parishes with different ethnicities, um, a mix of different parishioners, or you have some other faith worldview system, or just consider yourself a spiritual person, or you're a secularist. Um, we all interpret phenomena in a different way. We all interpret and view the world very distinctly, uh, not to get all, uh, well, I probably wouldn't even say that we're all unique little snowflakes, because we know where that's gone with today's, uh, you know, I, I think you get shadow banned, or I don't know, uh, you could not really have your videos on certain platforms by saying such a thing, but we are each unique. We are all so different, and the way we perceive the world around us is different. Now, um, what I do want to say is um, throughout my life, I have been like, you know, very like um, determined to follow my worldview. But my worldview has been fluid and influenced by so many things, um, but the core of it has remained. And much of the person I am, I want to share that with the world. I want to um, teach. I want to discuss literature and art and my many, many interests. Um, I've been on the path to become a pastor. I've been a candidate for the priesthood. In orthodoxy, so if you don't know about orthodoxy, don't like you know lump me in with some kind of Roman um, Catholic. It, it's it's very different than that. We're not here to discuss Christian theology. Um, I have worked in mental health and psychiatry for many many years as my main uh, bread and butter you know breadwinner job. Um, I've had just like many of you um, been extremely impacted during the pandemic. I also was very, very sick during that time. So my point here today is the wheel surely turns. And um, metaphysics and spirituality and religion and mythology, all of those things shape my worldview. For some person, they may approach something, um, a, a worldview say that they're a Christian. They may approach that worldview in simplicity. And I think there's something very, very beautiful about that. Um, my mind works in a particular way. I'm a huge reader. So a lot of what I relate to, um, the, the way I relate to the divine is through text. Um, but I'm also a contemplative person, a person of prayer. Um, and, you know, we're going to discuss on these videos why I, it, it seems probably very strange to some people, um, why I would have a 1611 King James Bible by my side and then I would have something that's such as tarot cards or esoteric books and how all of this pans out. And I assure you, it's not what you think. It's certainly not some new age whack jobbery. Pardon me if you identify as new age. I'm not trying. I mean, it's your own path for you. But what I'm trying to say is it's not a mixture of a bunch of things. It's very perennial. 
It's very traditional. And um, I've spent my life pursuing that path. I've spent my life um, looking into the deeper mysteries of things. Call me a cliche, Scorpio man. I don't know. But what I do know is for all of us, however you choose to look at the world and however you see and perceive um, the 3D around you, the reality around you is we um, all have this. I view it as cyclical. You can view it as a linear timeline, but surely change is something that's constant. Our bodies are changing. Our thought processes are changing. Um, so we're never really static, but dynamic. Um, so like some people would say, the only constant thing is change. Um, but also cycles can repeat themselves. But I want to talk about also, um, you know, leaving one cycle onto the next. Now, if you look at something, say, um, a karmic worldview, a lot of my videos now, guys, are going to incorporate spiritual readings. Um, they're going to incorporate um, some readings from various world religions and um, biblical principles, all kinds of different things. If you guys want to know, I identify as a tr traditionalist, uh, perennialist from the school of Sophia, Sophia uh, Perennis. Um, that's just a way that helps me. Um, the labels, you know, sometimes I'm uncomfortable with those. Even if you say you're a traditionalist today, um, people could put you in a certain camp. And I don't want to be put in any of those camps, by the way. But what I want to talk to you about is say we say a karmic wheel. Okay, let's just say a karmic wheel or you could say a trauma wheel. So see, language is very, very interesting like that. And we'll surely have more videos where I will discuss that because my interests are also a philology, etymology, linguistics, and those are much of the things that I studied at university um, before I went on the path of um, becoming a mental health provider. So, um, and you know, if you look at psychiatrists of old, such as Jung, you guys know I talk about him quite a bit more than Freud. I really should give Freud another reading, but that's a whole nother story and I digress. So a karmic wheel or a trauma wheel, um, this can be with a group of individuals or this can be um, with one particular individual where you're doing a thing called a trauma dance or some people like to look at it as saying you have a soul tie, but it could be a trauma bond and it goes on and on and on. So you who joined me originally and watched my videos about narcissistic abuse would have followed me on a journey where you saw me do quite a bit of shadow work. I'm going to take time to discuss that as well and how that helped me in a very mystical and magical way exit the negative karma um, trauma um, cycle that I was on and go into a new cycle and um, go into a new realm of existence, so to speak. So um, where I'm going with this is there's all kinds of things that people want to talk about these days. Twin flames, soulmates. I am like, you know, a romantic person. I believe in true love. Um, you know, we can get into discussions of what love means in different cultures and the idea of romantic love and how that could be even a fairly new concept, which is just something I like to bring up a lot. Um, but... I think you guys get the gist. I think you guys are all fairly intelligent individuals, especially if you're following my YouTube. But uh, what I wanna say is, um, so there was a ton of shadow work involved. I'm gonna spend more time and then eventually I'll revamp this uh, channel completely. I'm gonna post videos to some different platforms and probably have a website. Um, there will be some stuff, some of my scholarly work and research and, um, also, there's, there's just a lot to come, guys. So I hope you look forward to that. I'm excited about it. Um, so um, where I'm going with this is, you know, I have a study in my house. Um, and um, I'm going to be getting that set up as a set. Um, I'll probably do some stuff outdoors still, but I'm going to be investing in some cameras and um, computer equipment and um, stepping up my game a little bit. So be patient with me, guys, because I am transitioning through a lot. My sons and I were adjusting. We have a new family um, with my partner, Autumn, and we are um, all kind of enjoying that and working on that and learning through that. But I have made it 
out of one cycle and into the next. And a big part of the last cycle I went through was very toxic and involved like what I would describe in a mythological perspective as entering into the underworld. If you say like Hades and going down into the underworld and then kind of a death and annihilation and resurrection. If I describe it as a Scorpio, I would say being incinerated into a pile of ashes and then being a worm and then rising like the phoenix. And now I'm in that phase of rising like a phoenix once again. Uh, I feel like I have lived many lives and died many deaths and um, become a pile of ash several times um, just in this existence here. I'm not getting into reincarnation. I'm not getting into things like I could talk about, like Christian reincarnation even, if you've ever, ever heard of such a thing. Um, any of that, or esoteric Christianity, or um, all the world religions and different perspectives on reincarnation, that's not what I'm talking about either. Now, you might take different cycles you go through, and you might have that past life view. Um, I did a video recently on a psychic reading I had, and some people might think I discredited that, but I looked at it as a very good experience, especially with archetypes, and that's what I've been working with tarot for, is the archetypal images. We could say Tarot is fairly recent. If you look at something um, such as what the Rider Weight deck of tarot cards is based on, um, very, very recent, and it was made for card games, not for fortune telling and soothsaying and whatnot. And then we could look at something like the Aleister Crowley, what many people call Thoth or Thoth deck, but should probably uh, properly be called um, um, the Dehot deck. So I want to give credit to um, Demian uh, Ecoles for that um, because. Um, he, I watched a video of his and he talked about the um, temple in Egypt. So some of those archetypal images go, could go back that far to ancient Egypt even. Definitely we have archetypes throughout the ages. We can look at, speaking of um, Egyptian things, Osiris for example, right? And many people who want to bring up the pagan origins of Christianity and um, all these kind of things um, are fascinating. They're my passion. They are my main primary interest. But I want to try to use some of that learning and um, um, those passions and interests for anybody, for um, the most uh, staunch secularist uh, person who just has a view of like this lifetime is it. Maybe they're very scientifically minded. I don't know. Um, but I want to be able to relate to all kinds of people, agnostics, um, very religious people, maybe hyper-religious people, um, religious extremists, dare I say. Um, and I'm an extreme personality myself, so I enjoy those things, but I also recognize the need to reach a broader audience and expand so that people, like, by giving back with my time, treasure, and talents and my own gifts that I feel God has given to me, I'm able to reach more people. And I do believe that this channel is going to grow immensely. Um, some of my videos may be hosted on other platforms and uh, it will grow that way, but I find great value in this and I am learning along with you. So if you joined my channel because you suffered abuse from a personality disordered individual, uh, hold on and join me and find a different perspective and maybe it'll be healthier than continually watching videos about why people who are NPD do this and how borderlines have next to no sense of self and they only just kind of like a prism, they uh, only can reflect what's coming into them and they don't really have anything in their core, their center, um, so they don't really even know who they are or um, these NPD people are just no emotions and they only have the emotions of, of envy and, and, and anger and jealousy and okay guys, those things might be helpful to you at some time but mark my words, this is a very Western, um, it, you guys are, might be upset, some people might, but uh, psychology, I don't view it as a hard science. I, that's why I gravitated towards psychiatry and wanted to study psychiatry. Um, I didn't necessarily want to sign up just to be a prescriber and do 20 minute consults because that's, that's not an interest of uh, psychotropic medications, definitely are an interest of mine. Um, psychoactive plants are a definite interest of mine, but what I'm getting at is I think that we can even almost not just look at diagnoses. Uh, my girlfriend and I discuss this a lot. Uh, she is a therapist and uh, we have 
it's almost inescapable to talk about mental health stuff, but it's always been a struggle of mine to see people through uh, the lens of diagnoses. If you have a worldview such as mine, um, you know, we're all faulted. None of us are perfect. That seems like a very narcissistic thing to think. Um, you're perfect. I'm pretty much pretty near perfect, but, but that's just my sense of humor. I know my faults. I know my shortcomings. And um, what I want to say is I want to transmute those things kind of like alchemy and find a way where those things can be incorporated. So many different things can be incorporated to teach us and to help us to learn um, how to uh, cope in life and how to navigate life in a successful manner. Um, so I hope that you're excited about that as as I am. And what I'm looking at now is when you exit a particular phase, I've been thinking about this a lot. It's been helping me um, looking at things such as karma, for example, or you could say trauma. There's very, very next to no difference between like a, a trauma wheel or a, a karmic wheel and where you're having to work through certain things um, within yourself, having to deal with core injuries, um, 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 hurts and wounds from your childhood and you're needing to um, work th through those things in order to progress to the next phase of life. It's that simple. If some of you are in therapy and you participate in psychotherapy, then you're going to know what I mean. If some of you are on a spiritual path, any kind of human evolution, you're going to understand. There's things that have happened to us throughout our life that have traumatized us, that have wounded us, that have hurt us, and they affect us. And if we suppress those things and don't deal with them sooner or later, we're going to have to confront them. We're going to have to deal with those demons and we're going to have to um, find a way to bring light from the darkness. So um, that's what I've been thinking about today, uh, cycles. And you don't want to repeat a cycle. You don't want to go back. You want to learn your lessons and go forward, to move forward on to the new lessons, the next thing that uh, God, or you want to say the universe, um, life has to present to you. And you want to be going forward and you want to be growing and expanding, um, learning. And then you're able to also help other people on their journey. We're linked together. I'm pretty much like a kind of a, a lone wolf type. However, I do um, think that uh, we need each other. Um, we want to, we're built for relationships. We enter into relationships, some of them good, some of them bad, and some of them something in between, kind of gray area, good and bad. But what we want to do is pursue um, our highest self. Um, we want to, I want to exist in this world with doing as little harm to others as I can. I'm very like deeply repentant and remorseful for harm that I've caused um, to others. I realized even while doing a lot of shadow work, that was my last, um, karmic or trauma cycle or whatever you'd like to call it uh, was a time where I went very, very into my shadow side. Now, I wasn't operating in that shadow side all the, the way, and it's not a split. Um, Jung teaches us that we want to find integration between the shadow and between um, our higher self, and that is all um, integration to become whole and complete and to find that oneness. There is no duality, something that I have um, brought up that was extremely important. If you've ever seen any interviews uh, with me on them, I discussed that, that um, I do not believe in uh, duality. I try to practice non-duality. Now that goes deep into Vedic philosophy um, and all through religion, psychology, um, psychiatry, even if you want to separate psychology from uh, religion, it, it's impossible because if you study the history of psychology and the history of psychotherapy, you're going to learn that there is a deep, deep, deep um, root system um, that involves religion, um, involves world mythology and all of those things. So I am in a new phase of life. I'm in a new cycle, healthy, happy, not without my own problems, dealing with lots of trauma. A um, lot of things came up when I was doing that shadow work. Uh, the people that entered into my life, uh, doing trauma dances, 
um, unhealthy relationships, and it's all there. The thing about me is that I told all, and I'm an open book, and at my worst, I let you guys see that. Now, some of that definitely was play acting in the sense of Mushima. If you knew, like, I, I really like Yukio Mushima. Um, there's a lot of different people that have influenced my aesthetic and how I choose to make videos. So when I did the shadow work, it was very, very apparent. And I did things um, with my shadow side. I have a nickname, Wolvi. Uh, that is me. I am him. He is me. I'm an integrated person. There's no duality or split personality or ID, identity, disorder, um, BS going on here. Um, any kind of disassociation uh, in my life, your life, we believe now that it's all trauma-based, right? That's the direction that we're going in mental health. So... Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to sharing more about this with you. Justin Williams Savoy. Peace.